Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Today I'm evaluating fresh books on Chapter 7 of the Fit Small Business case study. So Chapter 7 deals with the reports that can be generated by the software. So our case study, this is a little different. We don't actually have any transactions to enter. Uh, we're just supposed to check um, whether all of the following reports can be created by the software. So first, um, a balance sheet. So let's go to our reports tab. Oh, I guess we're there. Okay, so if we scroll down into our accounting reports, we can see balance sheet. Looks like if we star a report, it'll show up in our favorites up here. So that's kind of nice. So let's open the balance sheet. Um, this is just as of today. Uh, that's no good. We always want a comparative balance sheet. So we want the beginning and ending of the period. So it looks like we can do compare dates. And then we'll do the beginning of the, let's do the, beginning of the period, which is the end of the prior period, to today's date. Actually, can we just do it for the year? There we go. Good. Okay. So that looks good. Now, the problem I have with this balance sheet is that it's not very much detail. So we have several different cash accounts. So this is only showing our parent accounts. So property, plant, and equipment, we have a couple of different accounts, and then we have some accumulated depreciation that's offsetting those accounts. Um, at the very least, accumulated depreciation absolutely needs to be shown separately on a balance sheet. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to give it full points for their balance sheet because this is only the parent accounts. Um, you need to be able, which is fine, but you need to be able to expand these um, or choose an option to expand to, to show all of the detail, and you can't. So that's not a very good balance sheet, so I'm just going to give it a half a point. Okay. Um, good. So, okay. Uh, next is the profit and loss statement. So let's go back. down to accounting reports, profit and loss. Let's go ahead and star that one too. That's an important one. Okay, nice. This looks like it's broken out by month. That's nice. Um, good. It looks like it is, given, it is uh, giving us some detail. It's not just the parent accounts. It's giving us some detail. Okay, yeah, I think that's sufficient detail. Okay, I do like that it's uh, by month, so let's see what kind of uh, filters we can have, date, range, this year, so we can have build or cash, okay. Group by month, group by quarter. Okay. So can, can't we do comparative? So I profit and loss should show this year's compared to last year's. That's a typical profit and loss statement. Doesn't look like we can do that here. So we can't compare it to last year. But I do like that you can split it into quarters and, and months. That's nice. Okay, so I'm going to give it half credit again because you can't compare this year's to last year's all in one report. Okay, statement of cash flows. Okay. So this is for the month. Let's make it for the year. Okay, gives us our starting balance, cash inflow, cash outflow, ending balance. Okay, so net change is 116. So sales, expense and bill payments, sales tax, investing, financing. Okay, I'll give them credit. That's a pretty standard format for your cash flow statement. Okay. 
Okay, accounts receivable aging. This is one of the most important reports for management to look at. This lets you know who owes you money and how long it's been overdue. Um, so I think they call it the accounts aging report. And uh, good. So as of October 28th, looks like Trampoline Cities owes us $100 and is 90 days overdue. So we need to get on them and get payment. Okay, that report looks good. Accounts payable aging, so who do you owe and how overdue are your bills? Um, so accounts payable aging. Very nice, we owe the widgets guy $150 and it's 90 days overdue. So that looks good. Uh, income loss by month, yes, we were able to do that. Income and loss by customer, um, Yes, I think I saw something about that. We have revenue by client. And we have profitability details. Let's see what this is. as of okay okay so we can select a customer and then we can view the profitability for that customer okay I will accept that I think that's pretty decent Income loss by customer. Um, there is no class tracking. There's no location tracking. Income loss by project. We can use that same fo form we just did. Plus, there's also all that information within the project center. Um, unbilled charges and unbilled time. So, do we have a report for them? So, remember when we enter an expense, we can mark it as billable and then add it to an invoice later. So, do we have a report? that will show us all of those unbilled expenses. No, this doesn't really have to do with unbilled expenses. Well, we don't in the normal reports. Let's go to Let's go to expenses. Okay, so here has unbilled versus build. Okay, so there is an unbilled expense, but can we really can we do a report for it? Well, not from there. So, of course, it's easy when there's just one, but if what if we had, you know, pages and pages of bills? We'd want to be able to print a report with our bills. What kind of detail does it give us under invoices? Yeah, okay. So, i tell you what. Let's give them half credit. The information's there, but it's not in a report, and you really need to be in a report. Okay, unbilled time. And then I think it's going to be the same thing. I think if we go to time tracking, yeah, we'll sh see that it's billed. I think if we entered something that wasn't billed yet, it would, I'm sure, it would show up as unbilled. Um, I don't know what these are. Yeah, that's if you use the time clock. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm going to do a half point again. Um, so it does show you the unbilled time um, on screen there, um, but you can't get a report where it shows it all on one screen. Okay, transaction list by customer. So 
So let's see. Revenue by client, so that's good. Now what about expense by client? What if we go to clients up here? I mean, again, so you can go in here and you can look up all of this stuff by client. You can look at invoices, you can look at credits, you can look at expenses. But there's no way to print a report that shows all of the transactions by customer. So again, we'll give them a half point. Expenses by vendor is going to be the same thing. Okay, general ledger. Uh, actually, expenses expenses by vendor. Maybe we better look at that a little closer. Can we organize them by vendor? Ah, right here we go. Vendors. Yeah, there we go. Click on that, I'm guessing. Yeah, there we go. I tell you what. Um, so this is available. So this would be all the bills for Widget Guy. Um, so I'm going to count that as a as a report. I think because all of it's in the same place for the Widgets Guy. All of it's all of the expenses are in the same spot. So let's give them a full point for that. Okay, General Ledger. This is much easier. Accounting, they do have a general ledger. Good, so let's make it for the whole year. Okay, and there we go. There is your general ledger, shows all the expenses and all the accounts. And then a trial balance. So the trial balance, now your balance sheet didn't give account detail, your trial balance does. So it's not just by the parent account. Um, the parent account is underneath it, but it actually gives you the individual accounts as well. Okay, so that's a good trial balance. Excellent. Okay, so that's reporting chapter 7 of the FSB case study for FreshBooks.